Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. It is fantastic to have you here because eight months ago we made ourselves a uh, rather beautiful forge. While making that forge, we told you all that we were going to make forge doors. We then proceeded to forget to make forge doors before we painted it, and we thought, you know what, let's just keep using it. Let's just, we'll just start using it. It'll be fine. Well, it was not fine. It was broken brick after broken brick. It was nightmare after nightmare. But now, eight months on, we have finally started. Today is part two of working on this beautiful contraption of a forge door. We've got a whole lot to learn about engineering and then electrical things and motors and spinny things. And so it's a joy to bring you along this education and this journey. We hope you enjoy it as much as we will. At the end of the last episode, I cast the forge doors in. We've got a whole lot of progress to make, so let's jump right in. First task of the day is we are going to unwrap our foam board from this. Oh, yes. No! What a silly idea. Anything other than super glue. Okay. Oh my goodness. That's a 30 pound forge door. Oh boy. What have we got ourselves into? So medium density refractory is not meant to be the heaviest of refractories, but apparently it's still pretty ridiculously heavy. So we might be uh, up the creek without a paddle. Our order from Amazon has just arrived. And so for the first time, I get to look at the motors that we're gonna be using to power this. What do you reckon, little motor? Can you lift 30 pounds? I don't think so. <laughs> what have we done? We have our full Amazon order here in front of us. We've got the power supply which connects to the drive, which connects to the motor, which is connected to the drive by the Arduino, which is right here. We've got ourselves some breadboards, fun things, stainless steel wire. Now we still have a whole load of fabricating to do over here, but I want to try some of this stuff because if I find out in trying this stuff that I'm missing pieces, then I'm gonna be able to order them in time for when that's finished fabricating. So we're gonna do our experimentation right now. And the plan is to try and get one motor to spin. So what I have done is I have set ourselves up ready to go to try and make this motor spin. The way it works, we have AC power coming into this here, which transform it into DC power, which then comes into a stepper driver, and this is gonna be informing the motor what to do based on what this Arduino, which is essentially a little kind of small computer, tells the driver to do. Uh, this gentleman on YouTube, DroneBot Workshop, has been a huge help, his video also took a little course on Skillshare about Arduinos. We're using the example that he made in the Big Stepper Motor and Arduino video. We have uploaded it to the Arduino. And it is now the moment of truth to see if we explode all of this stuff. Plug one thing in. We will plug another thing in. <gasps> what? Oh my goodness! It's, 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 the, the thing is turning! The, the motor's turning! It's actually, it's actually working! So you're meant to be able to push this button here and have it change directions. Are you ready? Pushing the button. It did not change directions. What about our potentiometer? Does that do anything? Get out of town! That get out of town! It is spinning! What? And I can slow it down. This is the coolest thing I've ever seen. We have just made a motor turn from a computer code. This is unbelievable. Holy mackerel. Computers, guys, am I right? What how strong it is. That might break a finger. That's, oh yeah, it skips a step. If there's too much poor force. That's pretty damn strong though. Great, I'm just gonna leave that like that. Cause I'm just having too much fun. <laughs> Look at this guys, I got it working. I turned the button 90 degrees and now we can get it to go forwards and reverse. Please tell me this works. Please tell me this works. It's 
been a whole day of work. A whole day of doing something I have no idea how to do. Pin mode. Switch pin input. Reverse pin input. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Please, please. Oh. That's one way. <laughs> I have built it! I programmed it! I programmed my first thing and it worked! Never in my life would I ever, ever imagine that bits of text on a screen would give me so much joy. But I've only gone and put together some text on a screen, copying things, testing them, trying to see where they worked and where they didn't work, moving things around in here, to finally end up pressing one button for it to go anti-clockwise and another button for it to go clockwise which is exactly, exactly what I wanted to do. I couldn't find this on Google to fully rip it from somebody else. I had to actually use my brain which I thought was gonna be just the end of the world and I'd have to start, you know, getting help from people. But we only gonna made it work. And there's even a potentiometer on it. So I can make it go real fast, or make it go real slow. Utterly unreal. And you know what? I don't think it's gonna to be too difficult to go ahead and then wire up another drive and another motor to the same single Arduino. I'm just shocked at what you can learn just trying to muddle your way through something. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I am, because I have enough buttons, and I have the second motor and driver, I'm just gonna go ahead and wire this up exactly how it needs to be, which is, Two motors, two drivers, four buttons, and the code to make that happen. Alrighty, here we go. I've got that motor wired up matching the other motor, but in some different little pins here. I added some new constants, doubled up some stuff. We are now going to upload it. It's done uploading. Moment of truth. Motor one should still work. It still works. Now motor two. Yes! Motor one works on one direction. Doesn't work in the other direction. We got a problem. Found the problem. I just had it wired wrong. It works! One way, the other way, one way, the other way. Two motors at the same time going different directions. I can't do it both at the same time. Okay, so I'm gonna call it done for now with this stuff. We're gonna do the final wiring once we have an enclosure made for it. And you know, it's close, it's not all the way there. I have each motor doing exactly what I want independently. However, I can't get each motor to work at the same time. It's only one motor working or another motor working. I'm gonna try and post a link to the code that I have in case anybody has any advice they could give on the code. So that I can get both machines to turn. I wanna be able to, you know, have both doors go up and down if both sets of pedals are being pressed. I'd be hugely grateful for any help. But the Arduino and stepper motor stuff is going to the side as we go back to the mechanical elements of this. I would like to mention for those that are still not exactly sure what the plan is, the plan is not to have any sort of electrics whatsoever up above the heat. All of the electrics are going to be going down low in an enclosure, it's going to be fan cooled, it's going to be the bee's knees, and this is going to be controlled with stainless steel cable. There's no point ever in my mind did I want to put electrics up here. Obviously, electrics and heat aren't going to go so well together. This is some 16th inch stainless steel cable, and what I want to do is I want to make use of pulleys. Step number one, what I want to do, is I'm going to go ahead and put ourselves a snatch block pulley in the end of both of our forged door pieces of pipe. This is what it's gonna look like. Here's the pipe. We're gonna have ourselves an axle and we're gonna make ourselves an aluminium pulley here. If we do need to go to a full on block and tackle, we could always snack another one in. But we're gonna make one pulley here so that we get double the force as we pull. So this is gonna involve some lathe work, a little bit of drilling, and all around a lot of fun. So let's saw off some aluminium and get to it.
Alrighty, our snatch block pulleys are in place. I've done a little attack world. I figure if we need to go full on block and tackle, I can punch our axle out, break the welds, uh, and then put another stack of pulleys in there. Next step is our cylinder, which is what our shaft runs up and down in. This is gonna go something like that, and we're gonna have a pulley up top. In order to easily access the pulley, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna open up some windows and essentially leave it with four columns, just like this, leaving us plenty of room for observing the pulleys, which is one, cool, and two, for you know, managing what's going on there. Bolting on pulleys and adjusting the wire and stuff like that. So I'm gonna get rid of these and turn on the plasma cutter. Alrighty folks, what you've seen me do is make up the uh, adjustable forwards and backwards mechanism to which will be bolted a top pulley and welded this piece here. We're gonna end the video there by thanking today's sponsor, which is of course, longtime sponsor of the show now, Paragon and their heat treating ovens. You see, we have three ovens right here. Right here is the KM24 Pro. This is a double wide heat treating oven and it features ceramic baffles which have an incredible degree of insulation for fast heating, fast cooling, to cut down the amount of time it takes you to do your heat treats, as well as three thermocouples giving you three individually controlled controlled zones for the most accurate heats possible. Our models have the Sentinel Smart Touch touchscreen oven controller, which allows you to very intuitively adjust temperatures, adjust hold times, all of that fun jazz. It's even Wi-Fi enabled so you can check on the oven wherever you are, and make sure that your heat treat is going well. Over here, we've got the KM9 Pro. It is a nine inch deep oven. This one's also a double barrel. Perfect for if you're working on folders, stuff like that. This is one of their more traditional kilns. Paragon serves all sorts of industries imaginable. Not only do they make knife makers heat treating ovens, they make wax burnout kilns, jewelers ovens, glass work ovens, and they are constantly innovating their offerings. This is their modular vertical 50 inch tall heat treating oven that they designed just for the application of working on swords. It can be broken down into either one, two, or three units, and is an example of their phenomenal manufacturing and design capabilities, because we came to them saying the way we wanted to heat treat a sword was vertical, and that is the beautiful piece of equipment that they produced. So please folks, Go to the link in the description to learn more about Paragon and their heat treating ovens and to find a distributor so that for your next heat treating oven or your first heat treating oven, you make the right choice and get one of these beautiful bits of equipment. Thank you, Paragon, for sponsoring the video. Thank you guys for being here. I assure you, Paragon does a whole lot more technologically advanced stuff than this, but I've had so much fun testing the waters of this new stuff. Can't wait to see you on the next one. Bye-bye.